fourth mother box on instagram fourth mother talk on the twitter and youtube.com slash fourth mother box where you're seeing my terribly uglified face alongside everybody's favorite stealth ginger kyle cosentino kyle how the hell are you today i'm doing all right doing just fine i uh feel like Brad is not was not happy <laughs> with last week's episode, as uh, evidenced by his Jedi, your most recent Jedi talk. So hey, let's go. We kicked off Jedi talk with his rebuttal to your um, picking of the wound last week on the last fourth Motherbox episode. Um, so we could kick this episode off if you want to retort back to him so we can keep volleyball that shit because you know he's got it coming you've got it coming so the floor is yours your dime your dance floor if no, you feel like going down nah, i i feel like i've i've uh you know we've we've been at war a little bit too much so i will just say that um you know of all five five of his instagram accounts i'm glad one is really successful so which is <laughs> his brand tracking. brad's bourbon reviews so you look at you backtracking. What kind of what kind of information do you have on um, uh, Bradley uh, Clinton Hughes over there? <laughs> what kind of information do you have? Does he hold on you? It's, cla- it's classified. Uh, it's classified. That's the problem. It's classified. Um, so anyway, welcome to the fourth mother box, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Saturday night when we're recording this. Um, I don't know how the weather is out there in Chicago over there, Kyle, but it's hot here, but it's also in the middle of July in Florida. So hopefully you're making do because we are here. Um, Don't buy the BS that the parks aren't busy because they are. Okay. I was there today. They are. What's it like in uh, Florida in July and how is it compared to Arizona? Because I, I recently saw a post that, you know, it showed like, different things in Arizona during the summer, just melting like cars and signs and just, you know, different things that are left outside during the winter, uh, the summertime. Well, let's first, first and foremost, talk about, uh, or, or educate individuals. So I lived eight, seven, seven, eight years of my life in Phoenix, Arizona. Love that state. Um, it's the prettiest state in the, these United States of America that I've been to. Um, not the best one that I've lived in, but I'm currently in the best one. But uh, I'm biased because of Disney. But Arizona, living in Phoenix, I've experienced many summers. And I've experienced two summers here full-time in Florida and visited during other times. So, Kyle, it should be an easy question uh, to answer. And it is. And it's not Florida. Phoenix is way worse summer-wise compared to here. Um 115 degrees, which is about what Phoenix is flirting with right now. We're checking in with our family. That's You can't get away from that when you're outside. You can go in the shade, but it's still 115 degrees. Now, I'm not saying when it's 94 here and you go in the shade, it's still not 94. Yes, it's 94 and it's humid. It's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more of a a gulp of, of, of a heat. It's different. It's oven right? But you can find... Rep- like relief here quicker like you're in the shade if there's just a bit of overcast and it's like 90 something degrees still here in florida at least for me that's that's like compared to phoenix compared to arizona it's like a, it's like a walk in like a cold shower so arizona is worse arizona is worse that's when everything comes out well, to kill you in arizona anyway i always find scorpion or i always found scorpions in the summer in phoenix and we wouldn't go hiking during the day and because it's 100 degrees, but also even in the morning because that's when the rattlesnakes are on the move. <laughs> so things things killing you in Phoenix in the summer. 
Got to stay away. Well, if you ever decide that Florida isn't your thing, I I hear Oklahoma is um, an up and comer. Northeast for, Oklahoma, for, yeah. For one particular reason, that uh, they are getting an unofficial Disney park. Yeah, it's like some ex-Disney Imagineers and like the best of the best coming together to open up America's Heartland in Northeast Oklahoma in 2026. The concept art about this just rocks. I love this part of America, right? I love when it's celebrated. You know, I love the discovery of that time period and the, you know, the patriotism for one's country, right? Loving one's country doesn't mean you're in love with one's government, right? You can love your country but not love your government. And I think people need to understand that, right? Because I love the United States of America and I love living here. I mean, I love what the country stands for, right? But you can disagree with some things. So this this looks awesome, Kyle. What do you think about it? Just just looking at what we've seen. Well, I was thinking about it like, you know, I don't know if there's any IP attached, but then I was thinking like it it really doesn't need it. You know, I mean, America it's always great to have like IP, some film film franchise that's like a part of that park that you could experience a ride. I mean, you know, our our love for Star Wars you know, Harry Potter. I mean, that's, that's great, you know, to go to Universal and, and uh, Galaxy's Edge and experience that. But, you know, when you look at Disney and where it started, of course they had like all the characters and, and whatnot, but those rides, those old school Disney rides are not really like IP connected, you know, like Haunted Mansion and Space Mountain and Big Thunder. You know, they're just, they're just iconic. Later on, you know, some of them became, you know, film franchises like Pir- Pirates of the Caribbean. But, you know, that, that would be my hope for this park is that maybe, you know, if if they're not connected with IPs, then maybe just cultivate something new. You know, try to start something that's iconic. I think it'll be interesting to see what this develops into. But, yeah, I'm certainly very interested. If it, if it can kind of capture the, the feel and the ambiance of, like, a Disney park... You know, I think that would be a really great thing. Like, that's really cool. Well, like it'd be, it's like kind of like, you know, if Main Street was a park, you know, that's yes. kind of what I see of it for right now. Yeah. And this was um, I don't have information in front of me and I can't spite it off of memory. But I I know Evan mentioned it a little bit on our Jedi Talk episode. Um, but uh, this is like a scrapped idea that Eisner was a part of from back in the 90s, I think. So Yeah, uh, I heard that. I, I remember he was talking about that. Yeah, w- That's w- interesting. Which is very interesting. Very, you know, even even more fuel to this fire and this intrigue and this interest to go check this out. And I, wa- I, 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 I kind of want to follow up to what you were saying because, like, think about what made Disney theme parks like. Yeah, You're right, the IP of the time, but also the originality of a lot of the stuff that they showed us and gave us to, to your point like the haunted mansion the pirates of the caribbean like if we can get that kind of stuff out of america's heartland and it's like it feels the same way and it's it's nostalgic on the first experience then you know this thing's going to be here for the for the for the long haul and God, I, I you know we we sit here and we bash on Disney quite often. Look, I moved to Orlando primarily for Walt Disney World, Universal Orlando, and just what Florida has to offer by way of weather and beaches. I love the Walt Disney Company with all my heart. I really do. That's why I'm so critical about them at times, and I want them to succeed. But America's Heartland and Epic Universe are coming, and they're coming hard. So Disney's well, I, theme park's got to be shaking in there. And they're woke saddles. I think it proves yet again that uh, many other companies are expanding and Disney is not. I mean, <laughs> they're expanding in China. They're opening that frozen island. So, hmm. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully China doesn't invade Taiwan because that would be awkward, right? Sure would. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things they do right that would now be, is that awkward. That would be fucking nuts to see what happens with it. I mean, I've, obviously, I've never want that to happen. We don't need any more wars ever. But um, I, I don't even know what would happen to, like, Disney's property. Like, China could just say, well, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> like, you know? I don't know. They have. Uh, yeah, yeah, they could. But I think their relationship is decent. I, I mean, it's like 
they 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 have good relations with the Wookiees. I have I don't know I mean <laughs> kind of thing. So I, I who knows? We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about farts and diarrhea, Kyle. Farts and diarrhea. Uh, and by the way, I w- I mean I tend to always wear my Metallica fifth member hat. I'm just so happy to be wearing a '72 season shirt today. I'm always wearing the Metallica album covers on this right arm here chest in my back. Kyle has a bunch of scars from the road. I am Tom Oakery. I am Matamaka. He's Kyle Cosentino. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that they are taking, aud- well, not auditions, but what would you say? Participants uh, could fill out a form for a fan documentary that our beloved Metallica is putting together. Now, loyal listeners of the fourth mother box, Best friends of Tom Oakery and Kyle Cosentino. Degenerates that happen to stumble into our podcast right before you shoot up under a bridge. You should know that both Tom Oakery and Kyle Cosentino, we need to be a part of this documentary. Hashtag what you need to hashtag. Email who you need to email. Tag Lars and everything until we get confirmation that we're on this. Now, of course, I'm not telling you to bombard this band, but just politely mention that Fourth Mother Box podcast featuring Tom O'Kree and Kyle Constantino needs to be in this Metallica fan documentary. Well, if anything, at least me, I don't know if Tim did it, but, you know, I think you've had more than your fair share of interactions with Metallica. No, fuck you. I need to be in this. Come on. If we're going to do this, we have to do this together, right? And I would love for nothing more for for Tim to do this, too. Did you you feel the same way when you were applying to... For the Halo on Fire video, hmm. I did I? I don't know. That was several years ago. Hey, c- c- calm uh, down, calm down. I don't, I, I don't do anything on purpose here now. Uh huh. Hmm. Leaving your good buddy out of Halo on Fire video. I got your number, buddy. That's fine. All right, fine, fine. Then, 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 then have fun. Um, shouldering the load over there in the Metallica fan documentary when 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 you don't know what to say or or don't want to, don't know what to go to. I would carry you. that documentary. Would we you? almost di- we almost died for that band. We did. Nobody almost die would for that band. have anything more to say than 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 me. Okay, and you for that matter. But <laughs> um, no, no, no. But in all seriousness, yeah, I absolutely, of course, I one thousand percent if. I want Kyle to get this more than I than, than I do, right? Right? That, cuz that's that's what my friendship means to me. So obviously, best of luck to you with this. I have no idea how serious they are, right? It's it's so funny how we all started like like Kyle texted me, he's like, "Look at this." And it's like I was filling it out furiously at like 6 in the morning when I saw it and then Tim texted it. It's like how it all just got into our feeds that morning. Um and it's it's funny that Metallica isn't really making a bigger deal out of this. It's just like these side like these news sites are just reporting this right or am i crazy did metallica announce that they're doing this i feel like i saw it on facebook like when i like when i when i was at work and so i stopped what i was doing at work because i just said fuck work and i spent <laughs> like an hour uh you know doing that so I didn't know if it was one of those Metallica things that they like to do where they announce something and then you have a day to figure it out and put it together or oh, a few hours or yeah. like that one show they played downtown randomly, like on a Thursday night and they just sold tickets like on one day and it just sold out instantly. Yeah, they were doing that before um, they were about to go back on the road. Um, a little bit before 72 seasons, right? <laughs> they were just random shows. What the hell was that all about? It was like one of the first like stages they played on. So they, this was a while back. So like September, 2022, right? Something like that. I don't remember the oh. exact date. I just remember Tim texting me about it. And he's like, I don't know. He was saying like, he doesn't know how people got the information faster than like one God. of us did, but Jeez. Like the line was like wrapped around the corner or something because he works he works downtown yeah so um I don't know but it's like you know it's kind of it, it that's what sucks about being an adult sometimes like you can't do things at the drop of a dime you know the yeah <laughs> I mean you can and you can't right um if it's I I don't know like if if you got a 
phone call right now from like the people with whoever's doing the Metallica documentary. And they're like, Kyle, we need you to fly out to San Francisco tomorrow. You're going to miss a whole week of work. Would you, would you do that? I would just tell my work that I have explosive diarrhea. And I feel like if you tell your job that nobody asks questions ever, like you just, you know, you, you're just given a pass and and I would go to San Francisco for a week. I would just do that. Yeah. Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. For the explosive, 100%. explosive diarrhea. Well, you heard it. You heard our pleas. So the fate is in Cthulhu's hands right now. Um, it is. The fate is in Cthulhu's hands. Uh, so we were going at it a little bit there over the controversy of the halo on fire nonsense, but how about let's, let's just get into it about the last Jedi. So you started it this week with, with, here we go. with sending, Oh, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Like you didn't set this up for us to talk about the last Jedi yet again, because it lives rent free in your tiny fucking head. Guess what, Kyle? <laughs> It's, I mean, I don't know. It's 7.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 22nd, 2023. The Last Jedi is still canon, you short prick. What? It's 6.47 here, and it's it's not canon, especially when the actors are coming out and saying that, you know, it's not the best Star Wars film. I mean, Je- this is the second or third person that said, like, you know, Last Jedi is probably not a film they want to be a part of or is the least good of the trilogy or not the direction they would have chosen. Again, it's not the worst Star Wars movie. We all know that that, I mean, if we're talking about the Skywalker trilogy, uh, we, we could probably all agree that maybe it was like attack of the clones or something like that. But, um, you know, we all, we all know that I know, at least I know that the worst Star Wars movie is Rogue one. And I don't care if everybody likes it. I don't care. I'm right. And you're all wrong. So, that's, Fuck you. I love your just passion when it comes to your hate for Rogue One and your belief to do what I feel against very, the collective. Very authentic about that, though. Like I'm not being an Evan. Okay, I I'm know not you're just not. being a contrarian and a hater. Like I just like I I don't I don't see the necessity of it other than the Darth Vader scene at the end. Of course, that was awesome. That was but it just was not an objectively like interesting exciting movie it was boring i was like i i'll never forget being in the theater i watched this movie three times it's like it's wow three you know it's 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 just bad it's just not good you know last jedi is at least have interesting characters or like more interesting characters there's some stuff going on you see mark hamill again so it's like you know that's that's at least redeeming about it you know so it's totally fair. It's a thousand percent but, fair. I get but yeah, it. Yeah, John John Boyega, not uh, not too much a fan. No, but well, uh, he wants to come back. Yeah, I mean, he wants I haven't to come seen back. Him and... in anything else is he having like the the Daisy Ridley effect where no. you know he's not getting work outside of Star Wars. No, well, Daisy Ridley was getting work outside of Star Wars. She was doing smaller stuff, right? I, I mean, I don't know how big Star Wars. You know how how do you get bigger I, than Star Wars, right? So. I mean, I think she's a brilliant actress. I mean, she really did well as Ray. I loved her as Ray, uh, but I haven't. I feel like I just haven't seen her in anything. You know? Yeah, she. I mean, she hasn't been in anything anything mainstream. I think. Um, but and let me go on a side tangent here because I'm going to talk about what grinds my gears. At what point do we get to in our society where Barbie is the hit movie? Barbie. Who thought that would happen? Because I remember reading an article about Barbie coming out, and I'm like, well, that's fucking stupid. But, you know, I'm a, I'm also, like, a 37-year-old man. I mean, it's not really geared towards me, but, like, like everybody wants to go see it. Now, if we're talking about Oppenheimer, okay, that's, a, like, a historical movie, right? So that's, like, it makes sense. Like, I hope that does well, because it's by my boy Christopher Nolan. But, like, I, I don't know. I'm just tired of, like, the... The hype for this movie, it's just ridiculous. I don't understand that the hate for DC and the lack of success for DC because they're all good. Oh, like, we're going to talk about that one later. To, but Okay, yeah, we're going to get into that. But I'm just saying, it's, it's just, it's bullshit. Just fucking bullshit. I'm sure Brad is seeing Barbie. He's, he was probably the first in line to see it. Now, he didn't take his kids. He just went by himself. I mean, he said, come on, Barbie, let's go party. And he went and bought the tickets. I mean... 
Um, yeah, I've, 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 I've heard that it, Barbie's, I've heard some people call it trash. I've heard some people say they've enjoyed it. It's whatever. If you enjoy the movie, great. If you don't, even better or the same. I don't know. Oppenheimer out of the two of those looked more appealing to me. But again, Barbie is not for 37-year-old white guy. <laughs> it is not. Um because even with Margot Robbie in it, she's she's not playing. She's not portraying Harley Quinn or a character that we would care about. So, right, Kyle? Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I I'm just saying it's like you know, if you like the movie, go see the movie or whatever. But like, I just don't like. I don't understand like the hype for certain things. You know, just it's it's we live in a backward society. I don't even I don't even know anymore. I think I just, people I don't are. Bur- I really do think people are burnt out of the comic book movie right now, so they're flocking to kind of the opposite. I don't think so. I mean, I think like you know, they, Marvel just hasn't written anything good, and DC is is you know kind of flopped as well. Not the Flash though; that was a well written story. I mean, was it the best? No, but dude, the Flash. You know, I, I we can go buy it right now and watch it. That's how bad I know. it did. <laughs> Yeah, and even Indiana Jones, like I've just, I, you know, which isn't a superhero movie, and it didn't do that well either. Like Disney, that's why I'm just saying is, you know, is I don't know what's happening right now. Like it just seems kind of insane. Well, that'll 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 maybe tell us something, right? So look at look at the two movies there. Indiana Jones five came out by Disney, right? People are not happy with Disney right now for a multitude of reasons. So they're proving it with their wallet okay. which is great it's exactly what you need to do when you when you're unhappy um <laughs> maybe it was maybe it was promoted like nobody went to see it, it and it was promoted by halcyon fans <laughs> it's like they just band together led by evan and uh they just took down indiana jones just to spite disney no halcyon no movie money uh yeah 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 um I don't want to talk about the hell scene anymore. I really don't care. Um, I mean, I do, but I just don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> um, and then you've got The Flash, which is clouded by controversy because of Ezra Miller. So people are like, no, we don't want to go see it because Ezra Miller is a scumbag. Or, you know, well, also the bigger reason why, if I wasn't so inve- in, like invested in seeing what Zack Snyder started finish, because I'm a big Snyder guy, um, I would have passed on this movie because it's like it served no purpose, R- right? It like it resets everything, so to speak. But you got George but I don't, Clooney at I the don't, end. I don't necessarily agree with that argument because there's standalone movies all the time. You know, like the Batman could end tomorrow, right? And and yeah. that would that would be fine. You know, well, I, I wouldn't be fine. Don't, no, I mean, that would not be fine. That, Don't be saying like, that out loud. But but people could would go still would still go see it. You know, even if it didn't continue, it's like the Dark Knight Rises was ending the of the last of the franchise. People go see it. You know. Oh sure. Like there's okay. no, the, you know, the Flash or uh, actually Aquaman's the end of the Snyderverse, and, and certainly we'll talk about that today <sighs> because that's not doing well. <laughs> no, it's not. So. Yeah, we can we can wrap up the flash. It's on it's on digital. And actually let's 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 talk about Aquaman real quick and then we can come back to the controversy about the DC films right now. So um Aquaman two gets reshoots, like for the third time or something. It's wild, right? They they had five days to do it. Apparently it went so well they did it in four. Um they cut two Batman scenes from it with two different Batman. Ben Affleck was in this and Michael Keaton was in this movie. They cut them both. After James Gunn and, and team came in and said, gave him their notes and said, basically, we don't want to promise anybody what we're not going to deliver on in movies, including these people moving forward, so don't include them. Now, while I, I, I understand and, and I do duly do respect that, I don't like the creative choice of taking them out not continuing with them but if you're not going to do it i appreciate not giving us the dick tease so it's at least that um that's that's such a dumb statement on james gunn's behalf like they don't want to promise anything we already fucking know you might as well as keep batman in there you know yeah but it will st- it's it will get people talking there will be the mouth breathers that go online and 
idiots like us on podcasts who will say, well, Affleck ended and we saw him at the end of Aquaman 2, you know, given, given Aquaman the reach around there with that blowfish, you know, he might be in Justice League 3. Uh, you know, it's some, some nonsense like that. I, I They just want to avoid that, I guess. I'm fine. I don't know. If it, you're not going to go on with like, it, leave him it out. It seems I'm fine. like bullshit to me. That's 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 what I think. Well, what's what's bullshit is what you and I were talking about earlier that we wanted to talk about tonight. Right now is is DC intentionally tanking these movies right now to make James Gunn's rebirth look better? Like that's you a, know a uh, serious question. That puzzle piece just fits way too well. It does, and and maybe it was like this from the start because. We all remember that Man of Steel got a bad bad rap in the beginning, and you know, I'm sorry, it's just not a bad movie. Like, no, it's a you know, Chef's Kiss masterpiece to me. I don't care what you people yeah. say. Man of Steel's fantastic. I mean, you could certainly criticize Batman versus Superman. You could, but, but you're wrong. Ma- Man of Steel is not a bad movie. It's not even close to a bad movie. So if you think it's a bad movie, you probably didn't see it. So go back, go watch it. Well, let's right look, now. look, my my conspiracy boner is hard as ever. Let's let's talk about what DC's doing right now. So it's like for, first off, what just doesn't sit well with me is that like James Gunn like he he like did two two posts about the Flash and I know he it's not his movie. I get that. But you're now you called it one of the best comic book movies ever and then you said it's such a fun movie and then you're blowing the shit out of Guardians three, and I get that. That's that's close to that was close to making a billion dollars. I get that. It's it's what's going to keep you and and you, you know your family well off for the next several years. And I get that. And congratulations on the success. But you just when you're double dipping the chip here, and you're leaning heavy one side versus the other, it just feels like you don't care. And that might not be true. That might not be true. He might truly care, but you're you're the vocal piece out there, right? I just saw you talk a little bit on on all of those super powered episodes, which Kyle and I will will talk about a little bit later. Um, you know, I know you care, and I know you're a fan, but it's just like I can't help but think after seeing that from Gun and just seeing DC still decide to push Blue Beetle, which. I don't James the like James Gunn kind of shot himself in the foot by con, like walking comments back about Blue Beetle. Like is it in the new DCU or is it not? I still have no idea. And then Aquaman 2 for all the reasons we just gave you. Like it's just like it it's almost like they're putting these movies out to fulfill the people they hired in the role. But to us, it's just like they're going to point back to it five years from now when we're calling for Snyder still and say, look at how bad these movies did. And Superman Legacy has just made $600 million or something. I, I don't know. It's a conspiracy, Kyle, and I don't like it. It's very, like, political. That's a, that's a political politics thing to do. But it seems like it's it's very in line with what is probably happening. I mean, you know... Again, like you know, there, there's in that DC universe, there's there's not a lot of bad films. Like as a matter of fact, most of them are pretty damn good. There's a few ones that were just okay, other and then maybe two that I don't ever care to watch ever again. But like they're not objectively bad films. Like they're on par with Marvel movies, even better, you know, in in my opinion. But you know, I you know what I'll say is though is like. I'm tired of every movie coming out being fucking controversial. So if it's if it takes to like restart this universe with Superman Legacy, you know, then I'm all for it because I want it I want these movies to do well. I want this company to continue and prosper. And I want to see, you know, these characters on screen and, and doing well, you know, re reinventing superhero movies like i don't necessarily think there's burnout i just think the writers got lazy i really do you know endgame wasn't that far away that was 2019 that wasn't that that wasn't that long ago and spider-man no way home dominated because you write a good story fuck you evan it's a great story okay you gave give people what they want to see you write a good story people will go see it you know if you, if you give us trash like quantumania 
then you know it's gonna do trash. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy three was not, you know, um, <laughs> you know, like it did. It was not a movie that failed at the box office. It no, it hit a billion, million, dollars, I think. but it yeah. it was pretty close, and it was well, really well done for four characters that are not was not typically the tentpole characters of Marvel. So I think that's great. I've seen some people bitch about what they did with Adam Warlock in that movie. I don't know enough about the character to comment, but I think he's... No, I don't I don't know enough about him either, and he's never really been in any other iteration of, like, Marvel Live Entertainment or animated in any way. So maybe he's big in the comics. I just don't know. But, like, they, he wasn't really necessary in that film. I'll say that. Like, so... Except being part I mean, of the New the, Guardians. I think... I think Cosmo the dog was more interesting than Adam Warlock. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cosmo's adorable. All dogs are superior over all characters. If this be a movie about dog, dogs, the Dog Avengers, that should be the next movie. That should be yeah. the next Avengers movie. Are you keeping up with be. Secret Invasion? Because I am still behind. Yes, I am all caught up. Was episode five any good? I mean, it's okay. You know, they're they're kind of tapping more into the super scroll thing. It's just like a oh yeah, a spy uh, like a spy thriller kind of a movie or kind of a TV show and I don't maybe I just don't like spy thrillers, but it's just not it's not doing much for me. I mean, I think it's this episode, this week's episode, last week's episode kind of like renewed my interest in it because if it was going to continue like it was with episodes 1 through 3, I don't know if I would finish it like and that's pretty bad because, you know, it has some great castings in there. (laughs) So uh, I think next week might be the last episode. I think they're only doing six. I think you're not mistaken. I think you are correct. So I don't I think this story has, you know, it maybe it will blow into something else. Maybe that'll lead into the marbles. I'm assuming it will. I'm assuming it will. Because, yeah. because like, how do you just shut down a storyline where you're having aliens, you know, hiding as humans in the United States, you know, like, how do you, how do you just shut that down? You can't really. So that's <laughs> got to play into something else, which is likely going to be just the marbles, you know, or just allow them to, to exist. I don't know. I'm behind. I've only seen the first two. I, I really got to catch up. Um, but I, what what I was catching up on today was actually super powered. I had thought Kyle had finished the whole thing. So if you guys aren't aware, if you're longtime listeners of Fourth Mother Box, forever ago, we talked about when they announced this. Um, Leslie I works, who's uh, was a part and did the Imagineering Story documentary on Disney Plus, was working on one for DC. And it finally released. <laughs> like, this was two years ago we talked about this, and it's called Super Powered, the DC story. Right, Kyle? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Kyle has checked out the first um, episode, so that's all we're kind of kind of comment on right now. Um, well, I've, I've watched, like, um, most of the second episode now. Oh, okay. Like, I have about maybe 20 minutes left. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, we'll just talk. We'll kind of talk about that. Um, I love the style of this documentary, right? It does remind me of the Imagineering story. Uh, it's a shame it's only three episodes, but um, what 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 have you thought? You know, it it honestly, it, it I think it's pretty pretty awesome as far as documentaries go, because it's not just like your standard run of the mill documentary. And I don't know if you know what I mean when I say that, but it's not boring. You know, I, right. it kind of like really illuminated things about the DC world that, you know, DC comic book history, even comic book history that I really didn't know much about, you know, I really like even kind of gets you in the feels a little bit because it talks so much about history and politics and what's going on in the world and how comic books, you know, had an influence on culture and talked about things that were difficult topics and, you know, just, had in, like wrote inspiring figures like Superman and Wonder Woman in particular that really stuck out. And I just like when I turned it off uh, to to do this episode two, I had no idea that 
Christopher Reeve's Superman, in a sense, like saved DC Comics. You know, the that movie like really turned the company around, and the company was almost going to close. You yeah, know? they might have get gotten sold to Disney. Who which, knows? Yeah, <laughs> or Warner Brothers. <laughs> like, well, at that time, maybe. Maybe it would have been better to go with somebody else. I don't know. Those are the two options. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good it it it's a fair documentary. It's interesting. I'm I was shocked that they that they included a few things when I got done with it. I was like, oh, okay, they're mentioning this. That's cool. Um, and then they lean heavily into some things, and. You know, it gets a little. There, there's some things too that you watch. It's that's a little tough to watch, right? That it's included with our history as human beings and as a country. That's DC was included in. You know, their their pop culture. So, uh, it's good. Definitely check it out. Super powered on Max. Um, when when Kyle's finished with it completely, we'll we'll kind of give a full breakdown. I, I might go check it out again. Um, I like shit like that. Uh, one other thing that I'll mention about it is like. You know, they talked about Aquaman in there and his like one of the writers was interested in writing about him because at the time nobody cared about him and people laughed at at Aquaman like but this writer, I don't remember what his name was, but um, he he looked at it as like a challenge and Aquaman is the perfect example of. You know, you can reinvent anybody. Jackson skill is no longer available. What the hell? Alexa, shut shut up. (laughs) My Alexa just randomly talks sometimes. And and even at at uh, times it decides she decides to just play fart noises um, when I'm in session with people. So that's always fun. I told you that story, right? No, you did not. Alexa, play fart noises. Oh wait, you have your headphones on. <laughs> I have my headphones. Damn on. it! Well, I was I was doing telehealth at home, and just randomly, <laughs> she's just like she just plays a fart noise, and then she's like, "Did you like that one? Here's a wet here's a wet one," and and then she plays a wet one, and then she's like, "Would you like a loud exploding one?" And then my I'm like freaking out when this has happened my client is laughing his ass off because you know thankfully he was a younger younger guy and i'm like trying to tell tell her to shut up and she wasn't listening she just kept going and this is a real scenario and that the real thing that happened so i had to get up and unplug her because she wouldn't stop uh playing continuously and different <laughs> farts so i told i told this to my um, the the rest of my practice and they were just fucking dying with laughter. And it was it was funny. I just I don't know why she just randomly decides to, to do certain things at certain times, but that was just too perfect of timing. Okay, okay. <laughs> either either you have a fart fetish or somebody was fucking with you. Like I, somebody's got to be fucking with you. I mean, I have the fart skill on there because I don't know why. <laughs> Because, like, you could just ask her to play it, and it's funny. I don't know why I got this. I was probably, like, making a joke with somebody over. But, you know, I think she just, you know, oh decided God. to, uh, you know, play some farts for, for me and my client. And oh my and God. turns out it was pretty good therapeutic intervention because it was funny as shit. And we all know laughter is... Oh, laughter is the best is, medicine. Is the best medicine, for you ever sure. Watch, you ever watch The Three Stooges? I've seen it. That that's like the Three Stooges introduced me to comedy as a as a kid, a young kid. Like I remember being my my parents were still married, and I remember sitting there watching them and just laughing my ass off. Um, and then sticking with it as I got older, and then realizing like, yeah, it's just funny physical slapstick, but there's some other really good shit in there. There's subtle, brilliant comedy from those three guys. Like man. That would have been the time to be in show business in like the twenties, thirties, forties. It's like the show business on the rise, you know, Waltz era. Those guys, man, that, that would have been. You know what's it. interesting? I just had a thought is that, you know, we grew up in and we saw that stuff, even though that wasn't our time. Nope. You know, that was way before our time. And I feel like kids today are probably not seeing that. 
You know, kids today like are not seeing the Three Stooges. My kid, maybe will. old, old Looney Tunes. You know, or Nick Tunes, oh, right? Know, yeah, like the stuff we grew up with. You know what I mean? Like, doesn't it seem like that wouldn't be a thing because of streaming and everything? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the Stooges aren't really available to stream anywhere. I mean, uh, unless they're on Paramount Plus somewhere. I don't know. I watched a couple of episodes with my Amazon Prime subscription just recently. But 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 you're right. It was just, it was something I watched because it was just like the Three Stooges were on regular TV back then. But that's when regular TV was regular TV. It's different now. You're 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 absolutely right talking about the streaming services. It's crazy to think about that. Um, man, it's wild to think about that. But um, so yeah, Superpower, check it out. Um, San Diego Comic Con's going on this weekend, and I've seen two of these movie announcements um, for 2024 from DC. Now, now you know, DC does animated movies like nobody comes close to them, right? So we got two announcements. One, we got Watchmen, which, hell yeah. Uh, and then two, Justice League. Oh, this one's got me whole oh, crisis on Infinite Earth. On Infinite Earths. Like, oh, an animated film of crisis like let's fucking go i it, it's already better than the arrowverse version i don't know though because why like they did this with uh injustice gods among us and it's it's too that big would... of a story to contain in like an hour and 30 minutes uh, well you know, i agree same thing but... with crisis on infinite earths like you can't contain that story in in like an even two hours or three hours for that matter that's a good point but I'm still gonna have I mean, fun I'll watching watch, it. Be- watch the shit out of it. But like, injustice was good. If you rush it, you, you're gonna lose so much of like the important pieces of that story. You know, you can't. I don't know. You just can't like connect emotionally at that level. I mean, you can still, but it just it it just feels so much different. You know, like mm-hmm. when I I read the entire injustice, uh, well, it's like the first volume of it. And that's such a rich comic book storyline, and it really keeps you captivated the whole way through. And you know, the video game is is cool, uh, but I I just think that the comic book really just does it a lot of justice. I mean, it's like it's so much more intense and and thrilling. There's so much more to it. What came but, um, What came first, the comic or the video game? With that. Um, I probably want to say the video game. I'm I think not you're right. sure. I mean, but... based on the documentary we're watching, I, they alluded to that coming first. So, ah, uh, okay, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, but that's cool. Um, you're a thousand percent right. Like packing Crisis on Infinite Earth. That's a lot. That's a lot in a movie. I'd be curious to see if they split it into like a couple of parts. Maybe do an extension of that. So. Um, but the Watchmen animated flick will be really cool. Um, I ho- hope it's based on like the true comics. And I'm just, um, did you watch the most recent Watchmen on Max? No, no, yeah. Ne- and neither I never did got I. into Watchmen. Oh, the movie Snyder did is brilliant. I love that flick. I've I've seen it, but it it really didn't grab me. Okay, that's. That's fine. I know. I know some people like are really super into it, but it just never was something that that like I was into. Okay, that's fair. Um, do you think James Gunn is building up to a Kingdom Come movie? I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was just thinking about today as I was watching Super Powered. They talked about Swamp Thing, and like, I don't. I don't know why he picks some of these characters. Like we don't, I don't really want to see Swamp Thing. Like I just, I have no interest in this character. Uh, I mean, I don't know how they'll make it interesting. I mean, let's, I, I just don't know. Like mm-hmm. they, they tried a TV show and it failed. I don't know. I mean, he's done it with, with the, the Guardians, but I he think did. the Guardians are just easier probably to write for because... It, you know, there's four different personalities that you're working with. My, uh, yeah, um, I mean, I think I think Swamp Thing is popular, though. It, so it's like I think he's, you know, it it has it's. I don't. And, and James Gunn is just he likes the weirder stuff. 
and I don't like saying weirder because these are comic books. It's not weird. He just likes the more, not like your traditional characters. That's why we're seeing the authority, right? That's why we're probably going to see the, um, you know, like Mr. Terrific and Metamorpho and all that stuff. I mean, that's that's cool, you know, but I think that you should have the DC Trinity in there because we're missing mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, and that's a problem to me. Yeah, you know? I mean, they... And, and what about uh, the Flash, you know, or Green Arrow, for that matter? Like, the, you know, like... How about okay, Green keep, Lantern? You don't, have to, you don't have to do Green Arrow, like, right away, but, like, you need the Flash. You need the Flash in there. And, more importantly, you need Wonder Woman. Like, yeah. you don't want to let that go to waste well i don't know what they're know. gonna do with her it's it's interesting to see how they'll fit her into the story uh, into that universe right they haven't announced anything yet um i mentioned green lantern we are getting uh guy gardner green lantern in superman legacy mm-hmm. um from nathan fillion so that won't be our green lantern because our, i'm sure our green lantern will be john stewart we haven't seen john stewart in live action yet so almost positive we'll, or we'll get like a hal jordan john stewart combo and that'll branch off into like the Lantern Corps, you know. We're it seems to... like they're afraid of Green Lantern. Like they're just not sure what to do with him. Well, Snyder yeah. tried to get him where Martian Manhunter was at that last scene in the Snyder cut. He tried to put John Stewart's Green Lantern. That was supposed to be John Stewart's Green Lantern, the one showing up talking to Bruce. They filmed that scene. They filmed it, but yeah. DC Warner Brothers said nah. But for what? You're exactly right, Guile. For what? It's like they're gatekeeping this character to do what with Green Lantern? I don't know, but if they they fail with James Gunn's universe, I think they should just sell it to a company that knows what they're doing because they suck. Like the fourth Motherbox podcast for a nickel. And it'll be... Uh, Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll We'll take full charge of that. We will take full charge of that. Like I take full charge of your mother. Oh... Lame. Not lame. No. Um, that's about it on my notes, Kyle. Uh, and we've we've gone about 46, 47-ish minutes here. What else is there to talk about today? If there isn't anything else to talk about, I'll I'll take us home and let, and let you give out your final thought. Mm, I feel like we're missing something. What are we missing? Let's see. Uh, obligatory mother joke. Um, I yelled at you about your terrible opinion about The Last Jedi. Um, you backtracked. You didn't want to talk about Brad. Uh, we haven't said anything about Mike this podcast. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be my final thoughts. Okay. Well, thank you for following us at Fourth Mother Box and sticking with us. You guys have been great. We've been Fourth Mother Box. Fourth Mother Box on Instagram. YouTube.com slash Fourth Mother Box. Thank you for joining Into the Madness. Uh, be here next week. And we turn it over always to Kyle for our final thoughts. So, Kyle, puke on. Hey, Mike, I see you. Why don't you stop giving people the stink face and shotgun that Frosty already? <laughs> <laughs>